Welcome back to the channel. Well, in my last video, I took a look at mixed reality flying a sim using the Quest 3 headset with its pass-through video. And I promised to try a more realistic setup using a full panel sim. So in this video, I'm going to do a short, complete VFR flight in the Colorado Rockies. I'm going to discuss what's great about it and what's not so great about mixed reality using the Quest 3. And finally, I'm going to talk about what needs to happen to make it ready for general use. My first impressions video explains how this all works. I'll link that above. It uses virtual desktop and a Steam VR and a program called Reality Mixer. It's a little bit complicated, but you might want to check that video out to understand how it all works together. Just so happened to have this simulator that I built about four years ago using two 15.6 inch touchscreen monitors running Air Manager for the instrumentation and utilizing a Knobster and also having minimal fixed hardware uh, for the basic controls. Utilizing three big screen TVs for the visual, it hasn't really seen a lot of use in recent years since I got hooked on VR flying. Needless to say, I was anxious to see if the Quest 3 mixed reality could be made to work with this setup. The mask setup in Reality Mixer is pretty simple. It's just a, one a small pane that was set up to match the instrument panel. And then another one that basically I was sitting in, like a big bathtub, that allows the uh, video from my lap and the controls uh, to pass through that area, where virtual desktop replaces the pink color with the pass-through video. So to see how this works, we're going to set up a short flight between uh, Granby, Colorado, and fly... Uh, visually from uh, Granby down a valley, a large valley with a railroad track, river, and a road. Lead over to McElroy Airport, 20 Victor in Kremling, Colorado, about 25 miles in all. I chose to do this in the Cessna Skyhawk because the panel is shaped very similar to that in my simulator, so it's a good match in VR. I haven't flown a Skyhawk in many years, so this is not instruction. I just wanted to see, going through the motions of a flight, if I could use the checklist, the iPad, and maneuver different switches as needed. So let's give it a try. Well, we'll take it from a before start. Passenger briefing's complete. The seat belts and uh, seats are adjusted. Circuit breakers are all in. The electrical equipment is all off. Avionics off. Master switch on. Fuel selector both. Fuel shut off is full in. Starting the engines. Throttles cracked a quarter inch. Mixture set. Clear propeller area. It's clear. Master switch to on, it's on, and the beacon light on, it's on. Mission switch on, and we'll advance the mixture. Looking for oil pressure. Pressure's good, and the nav light's on. After start checklist. Avionics on, comm nav set. Transponder to standby. Altimeter set. Transponder's set to 1200 for VFR and the horizon is checked. Ready for taxi. Taxi light on. Parking brake released. We'll do a brake test. Brake test is good. And the instruments check good. Three, zero, two, zero. 
Grandy, Grand County Airport, Emily Warner Field. Automated weather observation. One, nine, zero, six, Zulu, weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, one, two, thousand, temperature, minus three, Celsius, two point, minus eight, altimeter, three, zero, two, zero, Before takeoff checklist, the parking brake is set, seats and belts are adjusted, cabin doors locked, flight controls are free and correct. Flight instruments uh, are checked, the compass and the HSI headings agree, fuel level is good. Half tanks, mixture, bridge, we'll adjust the mixture on the runway. Fuel selector, both. Throttles, 1800. Magnetos checked, right, both, left. Both drops are good. Enunciator panel checked. And throttles back to idle. Com nav set, set for the uh, traffic advisory frequency. Transponder set. On and uh, 1200. Elevator trim. Zero that out on takeoff setting and it's set. And flaps for takeoff, one notch indicating, and they look good on both sides. And exterior lights. They're set. Okay, final clear flaps are set for takeoff. We'll adjust the mixture on the runway to maximize the power. Lift off at 55, climb 7 to 80. Transponders on altitude. Takeoff checklist complete. Gravy traffic, Cessna, Skyhawk, 10 Romeo Bravo, taking the active runway 27, departing west, Granby. Final looks clear again. Runway is clear. See runway 27 and the heading is confirmed. Flaps and trim rechecked. Let's push the power up and lean it a bit here. Try to get some power here at 80, over 8,000 feet. It's good. Hack the clock and we're on our way. Slow acceleration with this high altitude. Rotate. Just coming up. Climb checklist is complete. See that little pass about 1130. Uh, should see the river and the uh, railroad tracks and the road going through that pass. And then we'll make a left turn, kind of follow the river. Crew IFR flying. I follow railroads, I follow rivers, I follow roads.
So as we're entering the cruise phase, let's talk a little bit about uh, mixed reality using the Quest 3 headset. I gotta tell you, first of all, that uh, mixed reality has lived up to my expectations, and they were pretty high. Being able to see your hands, your controls, as you can see, I can use the iPad, checklists, even with the resolution of the Quest 3, it, it's really no problem. Uh, I wouldn't want to fly IFR and try to read uh, the smaller text on uh, the glass displays. But that was true with some of the earlier uh, headsets that we had too. So that's not a problem. It's going to improve itself over time. I think you can see uh, that the physical panel blends very naturally with the exterior. Uh, you can see that red line, that's an artifact that comes from Reality Mixer. Uh, obviously, we'd like to get rid of that. But if it's positioned correctly and it's sized and shaped the same, uh, it, it blends perfectly with the glare shield of the uh, simulator and uh, it looks very natural. Obviously, the instruments are not quite as, as detailed as the model and the lighting isn't completely right. But other than that, which could be corrected if you really wanted to, uh, it, it's an excellent experience. The alignment and the scale of the pass-through video, uh, the stereo video, is, is uncanny. Uh, it feels so natural to reach out there with your hand and you never miss. You go right for the target because you have that 3D effect. You can find knobs, switches, everything perfectly easily uh, and without any problem. It's just so natural. I was really surprised by that. While flying in VR may be uh, visually a bit more immersive, uh, being able to reach up there and make inputs with your hands, uh, to look at the panels, touch things and adjust them, it's just uh, very much more realistic and immersive when it comes to actual piloting skills. You know, I was surprised how well the iPad worked how easy it was to zoom in to see text that was smaller very naturally with your fingers. I'll try using ForeFlight on the iPad in a future video with a little IFR and see how that works. But flying with analog instruments here using uh, two 15.6 inch monitors with instruments from Air Manager and the Knobster, it works great. So, so before I slobber all over the yoke here, let me tell you some of the things I don't like about it mixed reality in its current state, especially using the Quest 3 headset. I know there's some excellent setups with Vario that are very expensive, and they have kind of the leading edge on the software. But that is the number one problem that I have, is the software is difficult to use. There's lots of moving parts to make work together. It's not natural. It took me a while to get everything working. I have to use a virtual desktop with a chroma key to get the pass-through video to show up in the right place. You need Reality Mixer to create the areas to display the pass-through video. And finally, uh, it only works with X-Plane right now. It doesn't work with OpenXR. So it all needs to be integrated into a simple software. The other problem I have is alignment. It's very difficult to keep things lined up. You know, you have the camera uh, from the uh, headset looking at a physical panel. And then you have the reality mixer, which integrates those colored blobs into the, or blocks into the, uh, the VR world. And every time you take the headset, the Quest headset especially, on and off, it has to be realigned. When you put it on, it, it kind of reorients itself to where straight ahead is. And when you uh, don't have it lined up just right, uh, or if the uh, alignment of the simulator changes slightly, it can get out of uh, registration. And you'll be looking at the panel not lined up in the opening, uh, that area outlined by the pink. Now Vario has a solution where they use some kind of an optical system uh, to keep things lined up. And it uh, can look at those symbols that are on the panel and use those to uh, reorient things and keep everything uh, correct. Needs something like that. Now, Reality Mixer has the ability to use a tracker or a, a controller and lock a box, the boxes to that object, and that would work fine. Of 
of course, if the if you're using an optical uh, controller, you're going to have to have it in the field of view, and it's going to show up. And that would, in my opinion, that would be negative. So that's going to be an area that needs to have work done. An alternative would be for the simulator to have some ability to create those sizable color-coded boxes right in the model. And you, once you've got them positioned, they would be positioned in the model. Uh, you could create a copy or make them so they can be shown and taken away. And you could just place those in front of the uh, panel and, and, and below your position of your head in the simulator, much like what Reality Mixer does. And if they were color keyed correctly, the chroma key, which is pretty common in most pass-through systems, would be able to uh, show the pass-through video in those areas. While Virtual Desktop is a great piece of software, and I have to give them kudos for developing the chroma key system to create pass-through, it would be nice if the simulators or the headset manufacturers could create that same kind of software and integrate it with their systems. My hope is that uh, videos like this will bring attention to mixed reality and cause a, a demand for people to have better software. I know there's some very innovative developers out there in the uh, Microsoft simulator world and uh, X-Plane world who could easily do this probably uh, beyond my pay grade, but it would be excellent if, if we could have an open VR uh, ability to integrate this sort of thing right into uh, the software that runs our simulator in, in uh, VR with our headsets like uh, Open XR. I was, I was surprised that the uh, instruments were fairly easy to read even with the lower resolution of the headset. I made those instruments so life-sized and uh, they're easy to read, although some of the smaller print on the G5 is difficult. Excuse me while I grab the uh, Kremlin AWAS. Kremlin McElroy Field, automated weather observation, one niner zero five. Zulu weather, wind, calm, visibility, one, zero, clear, below, one, two, thousand, temperature, minus, five, Celsius, two point, minus, five, altimeter, three, zero, two, four. And the descent checklist, uh, power, we'll reduce that as necessary, mixture, rich, Fuel selector to both. It's both. And the landing lights on. It's still on. Approach altimeter. Checked. Cabin is checked. Flaps will get the first notch at 110 and the elevator will be trimmed. Flaps the second notch at 85 and uh, elevator trim will be set. We're down to the landing checklist. McElroy traffic, Cessna Skyhawk 10 Romeo Bravos 5 to the east landing 27 straight in. McElroy. So for me the bottom line is that uh, this uh, Mixed reality, at least on the Quest 3, is not quite ready for prime time yet. You can kind of see the airport way out there. There's a, a second hill beyond this one that we're coming up on, and the airport is around behind that. Um, kind of see it. Anyway, this. This is definitely my favorite way to fly in VR, but it, it's not for the faint of heart. It requires a little, a little tinkering at this point, and it's restricted on what simulators you can use. So we really need better software to really make this easy to use for everyone. Now there's a good view of the airport. You can see at 1 o'clock. McElroy traffic, Cessna 10 Romeo Bravo, 3-mile final, straight in 27, McElroy. Currently, uh, Vario uh, Labs uh, software from Vario 
is a really a turnkey solution for this sort of MR training. And uh, mixed reality, it will be here. It's just a matter of a little more time. And I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see it come faster. But in the meantime, uh, this is definitely worth the experience if you're willing to put the effort in to get it working. We're geared down and full flaps. The landing checklist is complete. I think this is really going to be awesome for cockpit builders. Imagine some of these 737s or Airbuses or, or other advanced simulators that guys have built. They're going to be able to uh, maybe show the virtual world through the windows of those simulators. And then there'll be people like me who will build a, just a front panel and a basic simulator and incorporate that. Grease job to go. You know, all the criticism people have for X-Plane because the scenery is not quite as good. I'll tell you, in the landing flare close to the runway, it flies really nice and realistic. Uh, runway, it drops off with a pretty steep drop there past the turnoff point, and it, when you look down the runway, sometimes it gives the illusion that the runway is shorter than it is. McElroy traffic, Cessna 10 Rovio Bravo, clearing runway 27, McElroy. Well, uh, thanks for riding along. Uh, it's nice to get to share with uh, everyone my feelings about mixed reality, my hopes for it, and I, uh, I hope that I've instilled some interest in you, that you might look into it if you're the kind of person who wants to uh, geek out a little bit and give it a try as an early adopter. Otherwise, uh, I just encourage you to keep your eyes out because I think this is going to come much faster than we anticipate. I sure didn't think that the uh, uh, pass-through video would come around in a $500 headset. Uh, just a couple years from when this whole mixed reality thing started and became a very expensive thing. And, and like all technology, it's going to become less expensive. And I honestly believe that it, when it gets fully developed, it's going to be the favorite way to fly. I know there's lots of hand tracking systems, but they all have limitations. And, um, you know, this is uh, certainly, oops, drop my checklist. See, I can even look down and see my checklist on the floor of my simulator. Anyway, thanks for flying. I hope you liked this video. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up, like, share with your friends. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Only about uh, a third of the people that watch my videos are subscribed. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you on my next video. Looking brake set, throttles to idle, avionics are off, transponder off, Lights off, mixture lights off, mixture to idle, master switch off, and the chocks in position.